Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for taking over the React Kiev meetups and uh, gathering us, us all here and uh, allowing us to hear such amazing talks as the previous one. I hope this tradition will keep going. So, uh, my name is Stas. I work at Rails Reactor. If you, some of you may know us. For those who don't yet, we are a software company with great family culture, lots of perks and tons of interesting people. We also host Meetup tonight events. So if you're interested in software talks like this one, please come take us visit. And uh, as for my today's topic, the talk is called Enhancing Your Apps with CSS Custom Properties. First of all, I would like to ask uh, you to raise a hand if you have heard of CSS Custom Properties at first. How many of you? And uh, now, please raise a hand if you use them in your everyday job. Okay, so I believe that this topic will be quite of hmm, quite of interest for you. Uh, well, why did I choose this topic uh, before hand? Uh, today, the interfaces as front end uh, goes on and on and evolves. The interfaces that we build uh, become increasingly more and more complex. And uh, every customer wants to have the sexiest UI possible, and uh, they want everything dynamic, everything moving on the page. And uh, I believe this is the ideal web page in the eyes of any customer today. Uh, as it turns out, CSS making this uh, dynamic, adding it to your applications, is not that easy. CSS in general is quite a complex language. Uh, Unfortunately, not every uh, developer thinks so, and most of us, uh, to be honest, uh, end up on after learning some basics of the language and do not dig deeper in it. And uh, when uh, JavaScript developers um, encounter any complex problems with styling uh, that they know don't know how to solve with regular CSS, well, what do they do? They try to solve this, it with JavaScript, right, as any other problem. Uh, well, because of this, we now have over 50 different solutions according to this link with uh, different metrics and uh, comparisons of perf performance for CSS in JS. You probably know about this uh, topic, heard of it before. Personally, for me, it never clicked, and uh, I have three issues uh, with this approach. First of all, CSS is not a concise language. So when you try, uh, when you start putting all your styling as well as the business logic in the same file, uh, it grows quite big. I personally tend to keep my files not as large as possible, but as you can see here is it's a simple example from the most popular CSS and JS package uh, style components. It takes 15 lines to build a simple button and uh, you know that complex, um, complex UIs will uh, have much, much more stylings. Several hundreds of lines of CSS, that's for sure. Well, uh, it turns in the end in the <coughs> such a file that uh, after printing would end up in something uh, like this. With tons and tons of pages of code just for a rather complex styled uh, component with CSS and JS in the same file. The second issue which I have with CSS and JS is uh, that we were constantly told until a couple years ago that we should separate logic from presentation. And uh, <coughs> now, if we start uh, mixing it together, uh, you get your styling spread all across the application. Well, you either have, uh, if you choose CSS and JS, put everything in JS now, forget about CSS as well, or it will be quite hard to find where was this property set or where was that property set in CSS or in JS. So it gets all pretty uh, mixed and messed up. The third issue that I have that is, uh, well, if you, I believe that if you can do something natively, you should uh, try first do it natively without uh, adding extra unnecessary, probably, tools for uh, the problem. And CSS custom properties allow us to solve lots and lots of problems that CSS in JS approach uh, tries to solve, but 
it's a native solution implemented in every modern browser. If you are blessed enough to not support IE 11, uh, you can use it freely. It works like charm. Uh, I tested it personally. Uh, if you do need to support IE 11, you can still um, use CSS custom properties for static uh, stylings with the add, I believe uh, the last <coughs> rows do not see uh, this link is, uh, well. I will post my slides later, don't worry. Uh, you can use post CSS custom properties plugin to at least convert your custom properties to normal colors, uh, or sorry, normal uh, values after mm, post processing them. And uh, so with this, you could easily start introducing them in your code base as well. When you drop IE, you can switch them uh, without any plugins. Uh, as you can see, the first public draft of this uh, technology, of this approach, was introduced in 2012, over seven years ago. And you see uh, lots of people in this room haven't even heard of it before. And that's a shame, I believe, but I do not uh, blame it on you. It's just uh, an overall not so high interest of interest of JavaScript community in CSS. In t uh, starting from 2015, this feature is available in uh, Chrome and Firefox. So for a pretty long time, you could have been using it. For those who did not uh, read or hear about custom properties before, here's a quick primer. Uh, basically, what what custom properties are. Uh, I will. You can also uh, hear the name of CSS variables in general because basically this is how you use them. So I will be changing these terms. I will be using these terms interchangeably. You can. Um, you can set any variable as a property name if you prefix it with two dashes in the beginning on any selector and all. And this property can store any value that you can, could normally have in uh, CSS property. Uh, you can set uh, these custom variables either on any normal selectors like this one, ID or class or whatever, or you can set them as global variables on this root selector, which corresponds to your document element, HTML tags. And uh, to use them, um, the variable in any other property, you should use the var function. You call it with the name of the property itself, and you will get the value that uh, is stored in this uh, variable. The coolest thing is that you can use the var function inside any other function, like calc, which is also, if you don't use calc, you should start immediately. Uh, also, another awesome feature to build complex UIs and maybe li linear gradient or any other uh, property, basically. If I, I hope everyone see this line, but basically if you pass the second argument to uh, var function, it will be used as a default value if the initial variable is not set. So in this case, if we don't have dynamic color variable uh, available here, we will be having white color in the end of our gradient. Um, unfortunately, not everything is possible with uh, CSS custom properties. If you take a closer look at this example, <coughs> you can see that I am trying to store uh, another function as a custom property. And this function uses another variable which is not um, declared at the same selector. The variable tilt angle is declared on another class which tries to use tilted gradient custom property as its background image. So in an ideal word, uh, world, this function would read the value of tilt angle from the class and, uh, well, this whole gradient will appear on your screen. Unfortunately, this does not work uh, like this because, first of all, it's CSS, right? Uh, we have cascade, we have uh, scoping for uh, custom properties, but they do not, uh, like in JavaScript, you do not see local variables from the top, right? Uh, because this uh, variable tilt angle is not declared on the root element, uh, the value of tilted gradient is calculated 
before it is passed down. So since it does not have a necessary value in here, it will not be visible at all. But there is always a solution. Uh, you can, instead of providing a default uh, global uh, variable like this one, you can use any selector, asterisk, or provide a special class which you will have to add to the element where you want to use this uh, gradient, for example, variable. And in such case, uh, because we have uh, all selector here, it will be available to this class as well and uh, to any other element uh, in your application. I'm not saying that this is the best practice, but this is just kind of, uh, kind of one of a way to deal with them. Uh, it will be available to the uh, element with tilted class as well. Second. <coughs> well, this is it for the theory. And now uh, a couple of demos. So uh, I try to show you them better. The first one is uh, tilted gradient. Do you see the code? Well, I hope. Um, so. If you take a look at the CSS first, uh, this CSS is uh, self-contained. Mm, it means that uh, all the what is necessary for displaying the gradient on the right is uh, declared in here. We have this linear gradient function. We have <coughs> a tilt angle variable that we want to use. But if you don't have it, we will use the default value of 90. Also, do not forget that if you work with uh, integer values in cal calc and uh, you want to use it in any other function that expects not an integer, but for example, a degree unit like this one, you will have to uh, multiply it by a unit necessary. And we use this uh, gradient variable as a background for the diff on the right. Uh, you might have noticed that uh, even um, that uh, I haven't yet tell a word about uh, React in general in this topic, right? But this is React Kiev in the end. Well, it turns out uh, it is very easy to start uh, introducing dynamic to all of this and uh, to start working with custom variables from your JSX code. Uh, basically, all that you need is style tag and uh, pass in their object with a uh, value of the variable you want to declare uh, and to pass to the element itself. Don't forget to put uh, quotes around because this is not a valid key for the object, of course. And uh, in this demo, I have a simple input of type range. Uh, this is an integer input with values between 0 and 180. And on every change, it sets the value of the range in state. And I pass the angle value as a custom property. Uh, I want to remind you that this is vanilla CSS and React, no preprocessors, no CSS and JS. And so when we start moving this uh, range, it dynamically and very quickly uh, updates your view. So this is mm, one of the um, ways to, to use it. Uh, my demos today are mostly experiments. I'm not saying that they will fit all your needs, but I encourage you to experiment with them on your on your own. I was also told that not every one of them, for example, works on Windows, <laughs> but still, uh, I think you can find uh, workarounds for for it. The second demo that I want to show you is custom themes. Uh, lots of use cases for uh, CSS in JS, for example, mentions theming of your applications. And uh, again, I would like to st start from the styling. In this demo, we have two default uh, variables for the colors that we will be using on uh, our uh, root selector. We also have uh, a container class, which, is, uh, which wraps this structure that has its own two variables for font color and background color and we use default values uh, for, them, for them in the beginning and we use these uh, um, variables like font color and background color in the um, properties of the elements themselves. Well, 
I have an RGB component here, which uh, also mm, shows a couple of strategies of working with uh, custom variables. First of all, if you want to read the value of uh, custom variable from your CSS uh, in J6, you should call window get computed style uh, <coughs> method with the element that uh, you want to read the styles from, and then mm, on receipt object call get property value method with the name of the variable itself. So we will have uh, the color in here. After this, I set uh, these default colors read from CSS to state. Unfortunately, these two color inputs do not reflect uh, from start the values that I need, but it can be uh, because they, they are basically default browser inputs. But of course, if you change, replace them with any other element displaying your color, they should work fine. And uh, on the bottom here, I have this RGB container, where I will try to override the font color and background color with the values from the state, um, uh, which by default contain mm, my default variables from here, I remind you. A bit uh, below, we ha I have two inputs of type color, which on every change returns you an RGB value. And uh, on every change, I update my state with the color of uh, the value. And so if I start changing the colors in here, I can easily change the background and the font, for example. And this will be uh, updated instantly in real time. Another uh, use case for the variables as well is uh, mm, predefined theming. For example, I have here select with a couple of theme predef uh, themes predefined and in my styles uh, <coughs> file I have provided two themes that if uh, my container will have a brown class then I use these variables if I have a blue class then I have I use these variables and so if I start changing my themes they are, uh, I have to use important here because previously I have uh, I have set inline uh, variables uh, on on RGB element, right? So I have to override uh, the specif specificity. Uh, by the way, the specificity of uh, CSS is also included, right, for these uh, properties. But basically, this is a way of providing uh, th uh, themes in advance. Uh, the last um, the last example in this demo is called HSL. So this component uses uh, not RGB colors, but uh, hex color. And uh, if you ever worked with uh, HSL function, which is an analog to RGB uh, function, but it takes the uh, value of color or hue as an integer number, and uh, then the saturation and luminosity, you can build uh, quite interesting themes based on the single value. In here, I have a variable of theme hue. I have three other variables uh, which contain HSLA functions based on the theme. So normal will have saturation of 50%, lighter color have uh, higher saturation, and uh, darker color have lo uh, has lower saturation. And uh, all of this depends on a single theme hue variable. In my component, I also have, again, input type color and uh, a couple of helper functions that convert RGB color to hex. And now, if uh, with the help of this one, this one uh, input color, I can easily change the theming of all my apps. So basically, if you uh, build your theme around these gradients, it can be very convenient to rule all of them in just a single place by changing the hue of uh, your color. Uh, the last theme, uh, the last demo, sorry, uh, that I wanted to show you is uh, called Stack. This is like a prototype of the component I've uh, been building on my current project. And the component itself is uh, basically a stack of cards. So this is a stack component. If, it's, uh, if it does not have any cards in it, this is a simple <coughs> card, uh, 200 by 200 in here. If it has several of them, the underlying cards um, should be placed 
uh, on the bottom and peek out a little bit. And on hover, they also uh, stick out a little bit. And uh, the green border in here shows the border of the container because uh, you, if you can uh, imagine how you would do it, you would have to absolutely position these cards under the bottom one, but when you use absolute position, the elements are taken out of page con context and they would not affect uh, the width of the container. So, if you first take a look at the styles of this component, um, I tried to move as much styles as possible to the uh, variables. For example, this card size uh, has uh, contains a value of um, length of one side of this card. I can very easily change it and uh, card size is the base for lots of other uh, parts in this um, component. Like for example card shift, the size uh, that card sticks out when you uh, when there are more than one. Is one tenth for example, I can change it uh, to one fifth or one seventh animation style is here just for the convenience of reusing it. Uh, the size of the container itself, as you could um, see, is uh, calculated by multiplying, uh, no, uh, sorry, by uh, summing the size of regular card, if you don't have any underlying cards, so it's also uh, 200 pixels, plus the value of our shift, how uh, far the card pick out, multiplied by the size of the stack. And uh, we don't see the size of the stack declared anywhere in here, because I can easily pass the size uh, from the component itself. This is the code for the component, it basically takes the single property and we uh, pass this uh, the size of the stack as a value to our container to effectively calculate the necessary width. And in here we uh, build an array of the same divs and we can very easily provide an index property which um, is quite useful if, for example, we think how far should we put this uh, like second card on the bottom, right? It's very easy to calculate uh, the mm, offset for any card if we uh, just use its index and multiply it by the card shift that we have in here. So with this combination of a bit of uh, a bit of JavaScript and a bit of CSS, we get this pretty interesting dynamic component which uh, still has all of its uh, properties. I mean the d dimensions. It affects all the uh, sibling elements on the page and uh, allows you to build more complex interfaces. Uh, a couple of links in the end. Uh, basically, the first three are different articles which I recommend you to read from Smashing Magazine. The last one is the uh, MDN link and um, general practi practices for working with custom properties. And that's it. Thank you.